Hello everyone, today I am going to show a very simple idea of energy harvesting. Energy harvesting from radio waves. So the power will be in the range of microwatts to several milliwatts. It is not enough to charge a cell phone, but you can use this power to run a, a digital clock or some other sensors. Of course, the power could be high enough to charge your mobile phone and turn and power several LED lights if your home is located close to a radio station. Close means tens of meters to few kilometers. Unfortunately, my home is located nearly 25 kilometers from a nearby station. So I'm getting power in the range of few hundred uh, microwatts. So uh, you can see that in the uh, magazines, people are talking about harvesting power from Wi-Fi, router, cell phone towers. But uh, the power, getting the usual power from these sources is not that uh, as simple as getting the power from AM radio stations. AM, medium wave radio station means the stations which uh, emit signals in the range of 530 kilohertz to 1.7 kilohertz, megahertz. So within this range, you will see uh, several stations running in a city or almost every city you'll find the medium wave stations and the harvesting power is very simple all you need is a length of wire as an antenna an inductor two capacitor one short key diode and few other components nowadays we are surrounded by radio waves radio waves from wi-fi router cell phone towers TV transmission antenna and medium wave or short wave antenna. We can detect uh, these signals almost everywhere. The question is, can we convert these signals into usual power? Before answering that question, let us see how much power these sources are emitting and their respective ranges. For instance, cell phone tower, the range is hundreds of meters and the power is moderate, 10 watt to 50, 500 watt. Wi-Fi router, only few meters and the power limited to 1 watt maximum. TV transmission antenna, kilometers of range, limited by the line of sight and power is high 10 kilowatt to 500 kilowatt typical and medium and short of radio antenna it's a long range tens of kilometers and power is usually high few kilowatt to megawatts uh, so it is clear that for long range medium wave signal is the most reliable one the only limitation is the longer antenna Harvesting energy from other sources require smaller antennas for their higher operating frequencies. I will try to explain how easily one can harvest energy from medium waves. Medium wave signal is uh, from 530 kHz to 1.7 MHz. This is the AM band, AM and medium wave band. So if we wish to harvest energy from medium waves, how much power can we get from a location on the receiving end? That question can best be answered by an equation called Fries equation. And PR is the power at the receiving end, PT is the power of the transmitter, and GT is the gain of the transmission antenna, GR is the gain of the receiving antenna, Lambda is the wavelength of the signal and D is the distance from the transmitting to the receiving end. So power of the of a medium wave station typically in the cities is 50 kilowatt and uh, GT and GR are the transmitting and receiving antenna gains. So GT is usually pretty high uh, for the transmitting antenna and GR 
is arbitrary because uh, I am using a 75 feet long wire as an antenna. The gain is unknown. So distance will be the primary factor. D is the primary factor uh, determining the power at the receiving end. Uh, unfortunately, my home is located nearly 25 kilometers away from the nearest medium wave station. Uh, with a simple antenna that I uh, used, I can get power in the range of tens of microwatt only to few milliwatts. I used a 75 foot long wire as an antenna and this type of antenna is called a monopole antenna. The nearest medium wave station broadcast signal at 1 megahertz and for better gain the antenna length should have been 75 meter instead and power line earth was used as a ground uh, this is the simple circuit that i used l1 and c2 forms the tuning circuit c2 is a variable capacitor varying this capacitor we can tune different radio stations i tuned it for the maximum voltage across this terminal the first capacitor C1 is used for antenna impedance matching, typically called antenna tuner. The short key diode converts AC to DC and the capacitor C3 filters out the high frequent carrier frequency. If you connect a headphone across this terminal, you can listen to the radio stations as well, but we are primarily interested in the power so we added i added additional capacitor uh, to filter out even the audio as well i mean the fluctuation of voltage across this terminal would be much lower if i connect the additional 4.7 microfarad capacitor now at the terminal you'll get some voltages and uh, this can be utilized uh, for various applications. Uh, in this slide, oscilloscope waveforms are shown at two different points. Here at this point, you can see the modulated wave with the carrier, the high frequency. And after the short key diode, it is filtered out. So all the high frequency carrier is gone. Only you can see the variation of the uh, audio frequencies and the average voltage is around 2.5 volt here is the practical circuit the antenna tuner is on one board and the tuning circuit is on the other board and the uh, this is the ferrite coil the variable capacitor and this is the short key diode as it is a smd device i put it i uh, put it on a small circuit board and this is the first filter capacitor. To determine the power, I used this circuit, one voltmeter, one emitter, and a 100 kilo ohm variable resistor. Uh, varying the 100 kilo ohm resistor, I got the following uh, output characteristics. Maximum output voltage is around 2.6 volt. Maximum current is 95 microampere and the maximum power is around 45 microwatt. Uh, though the power I got is very small, however, sufficient to drive a typical LCD clock. And remember always to connect this LED uh, as it will limit the voltage across this terminal to 1.5 volt and uh, the power is driving the uh, clock and as well as you can see the red LED is glowing. Uh, the obtained power can also be used to charge a electrolytic capacitor or a super capacitor and then can later be used for other applications using a DC to DC converter. And this application was shown in one of my earlier uh, videos. 
if the distance of your location from the transmitting tower is only tens of meter to few kilometers the obtainable power could be in watts depending on the antenna size this power is good enough to charge your cell phone or other usb port devices oh, this is the 75 feet long wire acting as an antenna in my backyard it is a kind of monopole antenna Uh, this is the circuit that I used. The antenna wire come through the through my window all the way to the circuit. And the earth, uh, I used uh, the power line earth. And this is the ferrite coil and this is the variable cap and this is the short key diode. And this is a capacitor for filter and this one is the antenna tuner capacitor uh, just across the tuning circuit I am going to show the waveform after tuning properly a station you can see the modulated wave this is the modulated radio frequency approximately at 1 megahertz so 1 megahertz carrier is modulated by audio signal After filtering with the short key diode, you can see the uh, modulated wave only, the no carrier, only the audio wave. It is fluctuating all the time. I measured the voltage across this terminal. So without any load, it, you can see that the voltage is around 2.6 volt, always fluctuating because of the audio wave frequency. Sometimes amplitude going up and down. I connected an uh, uh, LED, you can see the light is fluctuating. Well, the power is sufficient enough to grow this LED. Now if I connect a capacitor to charge, you can see that the LED is turned off because the voltage is going down and the capacitor is being charged. When the capacitor is fully charged, you can see the LED starts glowing again. Now the voltage across this capacitor with the LED connected, it is 1.5. So this is sufficient to drive small LCD based uh, circuits like a, this digital clock. At the battery terminal I soldered two wire. As you can see the clock is powered up though the power is very little but sufficient enough to uh, run a clock or similar kind of low power circuits. <laughs> 